Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we get another installment of This Week in EDM, where we go over songs that came out this week in EDM. How self-explanatory is that? 26 songs I wanted to talk about. As a reminder, all the songs are in a Spotify link down below if you want that and have access to that, as well as a reminder that this is my opinion, so take it with a grain of salt. Um, but we are starting off in the trash category songs that, uh, or I guess a song that I thought was very trash, uh, and it's uh, We Can't Stop by Afrojack, Timmy Trumpet, and Lil Jon. Nah, th this thing just terrible. Uh, Lil John adds nothing to the song, and Afro and Jimmy put together some of the lamest big room synths on top of a boring bass line. Uh, this one just did not hit at all. And they're moving into the bad category, songs that I thought are uh, I thought are bad. Uh, we got Lewis Thompson featuring Rainey with Elevate. Um, yeah, so I've really been disliking the direction that Vice Tone has been taking sonically with their sound, and this sounds like Lewis Thompson's trying to imitate Vice Tone and. That's a no for me, personally. Uh, then we've got Hardwell and Bass Jackers with Energy. Uh, just really boring big room house here with little variation of anything throughout the song. Bass line or melody or structure. Just nothing. Um, also didn't really love the vocals either. They were just monotonous and pointless. So... Then we've got Bijou and Dr. Fresh featuring Big Tone and AWACS with Mobbing, a really odd track that feels more hip-hop than EDM, and in all honesty, sounds like an unfinished SoundCloud track. Uh, the mixing was flat, the vocals felt like they were just thrown on top of it haphazardly. It was, it was just an odd song that I did not enjoy. Uh, and then we got Steve Aoki and Lil John again. Lil John is here. Uh, he got a Super Bowl performance uh, uh, <laughs> cameo and uh, has two songs this week. So um, with Get Lower, uh, <laughs> the sequel to the iconic Low, uh, this is Get Lower, uh, but this time it's got Steve Aoki producing it. And uh, this song has just sort of lost all of its charm that the original had. I don't know why anyone would listen to this big room take over the original. Um, plus, the mixing is bad and uh, really muted the melody, uh, the synths on the melody, I think for sure. Uh, but then we're moving into the meh category songs that I thought were just meh. Uh, we've got Zara Larson with Venus. The Venus album is out now from Zara Larson, and um, this song in particular, Venus, this the this the title track, um, is the most like generic dance pop you could possibly get. This is like the most vanilla, basic commercial song you will hear all year, and that's what I think about that. They've got Marshmallow and Hole with Movement. Um, yeah, I don't really know what Marshmallow does on a track anymore. Um, he's got a self-proclaimed saying that he's kind of back into the EDM sphere, back to the dance sphere. And um, I don't know what he adds to these tracks anymore other than his name value. Um, regardless, this kind of just feels like a run-of-the-mill whole rhythm track, and that's not necessarily for me. Then we've got Artbat and Armin Van Buren with Take Off, a very spacey, big room tech house single, I want to say, if you want to combine those two, uh, with like crushing bass lines and big movements. Uh, overall, though, I felt like it didn't do a whole ton, and I think it's just meh. Then we've got Twirl with Shell Shock from the Hooligan EP that is out now. And uh, yeah, this track is very much just like a product of the modern EDM landscape of this kind of house trap bass fusion sound that Skrillex kind of pirate, like brought into the sound the past year. And um, this one in particular does sound like kind of an ISO XO and Knock 2 ripoff of sorts. Not quite a ripoff. I think it's supposed to be more of like a, oh, here are the sounds of today and be more of a homage, but no, it kind of just sounds like a ripoff, but I didn't mind it either. So another weird one. Then we've got Zoo and Upsale with uh, Thrill again. Interesting style of production from Zoo here, and I will say the Upsale uh, vocals really do match Zoo's like common themes of the like sexy house and the ooh kind of like whatever the heck Zoo does all the time. Uh, and also Zoo, your vocals, you just gotta work on those, bro. They're they're not great. Um, but yeah, overall, I found the song to be just okay. They've got Cyclops with the Bloodshot. Uh, stylistically, I didn't mind this track. I think this is mainly a personal preference one, more so than anything here. Um, whereas the melody just, I think, was just a little bit boring for me personally. And with a quick kind of track and its short runtime and there being no real like X factor to the track, I just thought it was okay. They've got KO3 with Transform out now on Chompo, uh, a bit of a robotic bass house track uh, that again from Chompo sounds a lot like Tokyo Machine, and I know obviously it's Tokyo Machine's label, but um, 
at this point, the variety is starting to dwindle down quite a bit. The Champo 1 had a ton of different styles and sounds, which I enjoyed a lot. Champo 2 so far is sounding a, a lot of like just a lot of just other people making Tokyo Machine style tracks. So it's it's a fun track and I think it's okay, but I just kind of want some more variation. Then we got Good Times Ahead with Rhythm of the Night, a jungle take on Rhythm of the Night, uh, which is an iconic oldie classic dance one. And um, yeah, not really what I expected to hear in 2024, uh, Good Times Ahead taking on a jungle version of the classic, but um, here we are. And I mean, it's okay. It's everything it needed to be and nothing more. And then we've got Sanholo featuring Aura with Glow. Uh, Sanholo has been edging more and more towards House uh, with each new track he's been putting out lately. And um, yeah, that that is kind of this. It's a bright and shimmering House track, but one that really didn't do a whole ton. That kind of felt like the uh, the week wrapped up in a nutshell. Um, just not doing a whole ton. It's short and fairly boring for Sanholo standards, but um, it's kind of just okay. Then we've got Graphics and Andromedec with come down um yeah a short more fuller sounding drum and bass track with big kicks and uh fat synths to it um but one that i just uh, didn't really get on board with as much as i kind of expected to um again just one that just sounded like not bad but just kind of just it was just there for the most part that was a lot of meh for me this week but then we're moving into the good category. We've got 11 songs in good that I wanted to talk about. We're starting off with Midas and Crystal Skies featuring Gavin with Stay. Um, the new Unity LP is out now from Midas, and I must say, this is a really strange album that I did not enjoy that much. That being said, this track was my favorite and the only one that I would have actually put in good. Um, so, yeah, it, it was just really weird. This is the only track from the LP that has this, like, crushing bro step drop to it. And it's the only time you ever hear it here at first and second drop of this song. And then it goes to something even different on the third here. But, um, yeah, stylistically, it's so far from the rest of the record. But in a vacuum, I do think it's the best sounding track uh, and the best sounding parts, actually, of the whole album. But, yeah, weird album. Good track. Uh, then we got Niels Hoffman featuring Dustin Tabut with Next Life. The Running in a Dream LP is out now, and this track in particular is a beautiful progressive house track that's very atmospherically centered. There's not a whole ton of fancy instrumentation or elements going on throughout. Uh, it's just more of like kind of a sitting in and like vibe and just kind of feel track. And so uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, I gave the album a once listen through so far, but haven't done anything more. But uh, that's kind of a lot of the album is very much that same sentiment of just sit and soak atmospherically. And speaking of albums, uh, we've got Disco Mushroom Reborn by Infected Mushroom. The Reborn LP is out now, which is a kind of, as it, one would assume, the kind of redoing, remixing, reborn of old tracks in the past, whether they're ones that were never released or stuff that was released. And um, yeah, uh, as <laughs> as typically as you can get with an eight minute side trance track from Infected Mushroom, this is it. Like it's a pleasure to listen to and it's it's good, but it just kind of is the same eight minute side trance track, which is sounds so bizarre to say, but they all kind of just blend together and sound more or less the same nowadays, especially with an album like this that's like the reborn, the redoing of older tracks. So um, I enjoyed it, but it didn't find it be a whole lot different. Then we've got Ever, uh, Everen Maxwell and The Living Proof with Challenger. Uh, the Heaven Sent EP is out now, uh, titled Challenger from Everen Maxwell. And uh, yeah, this title track with The Living Proof uh, is a highlight from the EP, I would say for sure. It's got this kind of heavy hitting dubstep sound, but it's all got like kind of wrapped in a lighter tone to it. And it's a style that I haven't heard a whole ton of in the past. And I think uh, Maxwell does a, a good job of blending the sounds here and the, and the dichotomy of the 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 heavy and the lighter sounds so good good track we got UZ featuring Troy Boy with I B T F Y, which I can't even remember what it stands for right now. But um, yeah, for how structurally empty this track is with no vocals and relatively few unique track elements, um, it's kind of a banger of a trap track with really fun tropical Middle Eastern vibes to it. Um, I think this song had the chance to be a whole lot more, um, but wasn't in the end. But uh, I I liked what I did get from it so. Then we've got Scro and Underbelly with Right Back, another killer collab from these two, and I'm just realizing now that these tracks are going to be a part of something bigger. Um, there's a whole new label, I guess, now called Scro Belly, or I don't know if that's just how it is on Spotify, but um, yeah, super unique, same with the last one, with a mixture of like acoustic, down-tempo, electronica, screamo in the end as well, too. It's like a weird mixture of everything, a genre fusion of sorts, and uh, one that I, I enjoyed. 
Then we got Shy Girl featuring S.G. Lewis with Mr. Useless, the um, Club Shy EP by Shy Girls out now. And um, yeah, this track in particular is a very bright and nostalgic house track that just screams 90s dance. It just screams 90s dance through and through with everything and uh, was uh, was quite fun. So I enjoyed it. Then we've got Lemater uh, with Time. Uh, the Red EP is out now. And I feel like I've been saying that name wrong for a long time. I feel like it's uh, Le, Le Maitre, I don't know what it is exactly, but I always say Le Maitre, but, uh, yeah, they're back from a kind of slight hiatus, like a couple year hiatus here, um, but it is a lot of the same here with this kind of comeback of sorts, if you want to say that, but in, in a good way, the whole EP just sounds more or less like Le Maitre's bread and butter or electro funk sound, and, um, that's something that I was on board with. Then we've got Blank and Grant featuring your friend Holly with Heavy Heart, uh, stru structurally and mixing wise, um, this track feels a lot like a blank one, which this is from a blank EP coming out soon, Emergence, but uh, sonically, this feels more Grant-like and the actual drops and melodies sound a lot more like Grant. And so all that being said, th this sounds like just a Grant song, but just a little bit more neutered. Um, and I don't mean that in a really bad way, like slightly bad, but not really bad. Um, I just feel like, I don't know, blank brought some stuff here that was just felt it kind of brought it down from a really solid Grant song to just be an okay, fun song. So it's got flashy Grant elements all throughout, but it just kind of packs a weaker punch than it normally does for me. So an odd listen, I would say for me, but I enjoyed it. And our penultimate track of the week is Lewis the Child and Memba with I'm Not Giving Up, a jittery future-based track with some really subtle but nice sound design all throughout here. It's mainly in the back end or like the the in the back of mind of the track here, but stuff that I think was um, really important to the success of this track. But yeah, this one was simple and it just hit in all the right areas for me. And the number one track of the week, in my opinion, was Caster's Choir of Banshees, or Choir of the Banshees, I should say. The uh, Sorcerer Symphony EP is out now, and uh, in, it is incredible as a whole, I would say. I, I love it. Um, sadly and ironically, this is my least favorite track of the five, and this is the number one of, for the week for me, so that's how much you know that this is a great track. Um, but yeah, it's the only D&B cut from the EP, and it's a good switch up in tempo from the rest of the project being slotted right in the middle. Um, and, but yeah, other than the chanting vocals that's fairly standard for the rest of this i wouldn't standard i keep using that i should not use that word but um that you hear a lot throughout this ep um it's kind of just a regular dnb track a hard-hitting well-produced good mixed dnb track just with those chanting vocals on top so it made it slots in very well with the rest of the ep and i did enjoy it quite a bit so uh, but yeah that is it for this week in edm let me know what you think of any and all songs in the comment section below but uh, other than that i'm dakota from Motomedia, and i'll see you guys in another video